uh, ever since the advent of humanity like we always been fascinated whether there is an alien life form or not are we alone in this entire universe so regarding that there has been a recent discovery it is called as the trappist one solar system and it's a very important topic in science and tech and this is basically regarding the search for life beyond earth so why is it in news so much because we have recently made a discovery of a solar system which contains seven rocky earth size planets and it is very close to us just 39 light years away like as far as universe is concerned this is like literally very very close and this is the first time that has happened that so many earth like planets are orbiting a single star and this is our best bet to look for earth like planets and extraterrestrial life they can be like microscopic life or decently advanced life can be available here okay and uh, the bodies orbit an ultra cool dwarf star and this is called as trappist 1 and the constellation name is aquarius and uh, what is called as the goldilocks zone so this is the people ask it a lot of time i'll show you a diagram also what is goldilocks zone so goldilocks zone is a zone from distance from the star where the liquid water can be available it is neither too hot nor too cold and this is the habitable zone and we apply our earth's own dimension where water can exist life can thrive light is also there so some photosynthesis or something like that can happen and trappist 1 will help all the scientists so that they can see how the solar system formation happens how the rocky worlds behave and so on and so forth now let us see the comparison of trappist 1 system with our solar system so as you can see mercury venus earth mars as you can see this is us this green region is called as the habitable zone if you can see this green this red means too hot blue means too cold so here you can see like these four planets will fall somewhere in the goldilocks zone so these seven uh, there are basically seven planets which orbit the trappist 1 star okay and uh, like similar to earth solar system also you can see very similar then trappist 1 is 39 light years away so for example the light which has reached us it started 39 years ago basically the distance traveled by light in one year is called as a light year and trappist 1 is very ultra cool dwarf star and it is 10 times smaller 10 times cooler than our own sun and uh, it is just like jupiter rather than sun like if you want to compare it is just like our jupiter okay and uh, it is less like our sun how did this discovery happen so nasa has a telescope which is called as spitzer space telescope it is a very very large telescope at paranal and it was used to discover these exoplanets so the name is important nasa's spitzer space telescope and spitzer space telescope sst which is also called as the space infrared telescope facility that is sirtf this is basically an infrared space telescope which was launched in 2003 and uh, this is the fourth and final of the nasa's great observatory program that is the part now very large telescope is basically a telescope facility which is by a european southern observatory on cerro paranal and this is in atacama desert of chile chile is in south america and scientist uh, used what is called as a transiting method so they can ask you which method was used to uh, discover this so the answer is transiting method so what happens when planet crosses a star so there is a tiny dip in the light and this dip in the light is noted and then you can calculate how far is the planet from there and whenever a planet passes the across the face of the star this dip in the light will help us in determining if there is a planet here or not and then the goldilocks zone usually it is asked in the prelims examination so earth is a typical example of situated in the goldilocks zone like mercury is too close and jupiter is too far away earth is at the perfect size where water can exist light can also come the temperature is not so hot that everything will evaporate and life can exist and its distance from our star basically means that we are neither too hot nor too cold we can support liquid water which according to earth life it is a very key ingredient like everything requires water like most of the thing anyway so astronomer thinks that if life can exist on earth so similarly there might be some goldilocks zones of other stars also so they keep on looking for rocky planets okay gaseous planets they don't look so much but they look for rocky planets and but like a planet requires a lot of thing other than just water and light okay so like they need to have strong magnetic field so that radiation solar winds etc they can be warded off and you need water very very importantly because lot of biochemical reactions require water as the base because without water nothing can happen so as i was saying that i'll show you a diagram so assume this is a star 
so this entire blue region will include jupiter uranus neptune pluto etc and this is outside the goldilocks zone here the sunlight is not reaching it's so cold that life will not be able to exist here unless it has own heat source okay then this red is so hot that everything will literally evaporate there will be no water there will be no life possible here everything will just die it's too hot this green region is a very small window this is called as the goldilocks zone assume here is the earth just at this junction may be venus just at this junction may be mars so there also life might exist okay but right now there is no evidence so this is the habitable zone of green now what is a dwarf star because trappist one is a dwarf star so they might ask you in the exam also what is a dwarf star so i'll explain what are these dwarf stars so what happens is star lives for billions of years but when finally billions of years also end so smaller stars smaller star means those stars which are just eight times of our own star they become what is called as the dwarf stars okay so they become very very small they are called as the white dwarfs these stars are obviously very very old and they collapse on themselves so they are very dense so just a teaspoonful of their matter will be equal to an elephant that is five and a half tons because they collapse on themselves and uh, the radius is just one percent of our own sun but mass is same so you can imagine that so much mass is like uh, concentrated in a small circle so they becomes incredibly dense and what they happens is like the entire hydrogen converts into helium and they have burned up all of their hydrogen because they were using it as a nuclear fuel fusion was happening and uh, it releases heat and outward pressure and this pressure is kept in balance by the inward push of gravity which is generated by star's mass but when the hydrogen is used as fuel it completely vanishes fusion slows down gravity causes the star to collapse on itself and it becomes a very very dense thing this is called as a dwarf star it has to do with uh, chandrasekhar limit also you can read about it it decides the fate but right now this lecture cannot include all that so this is a typical dwarf star very very low luminosity it's not bright like our sun and it's a very very small size just 1% radius now as you can see like this is the entire evolution of the universe so as you can see this is the big bang theory which is explaining it like 9 billion years ago approximately it formed the solar system and earth 300 million later we started with stars and galaxy then 4 lakh years later electrons and nuclei they combined into atoms and just seconds as you can see this is the way we are progressing so just seconds after it subatomic particles formed then electron and atoms formed then beginning of the formation of stars and galaxy then our solar system appeared then finally our sun will also die after some time years ago so approximately 14 billion years ago we were big bang and we are going in this direction so you can see the universe is constantly expanding and cooling so this is the current thing now why do we look for our life everywhere because everybody is fascinated by alien life or extraterrestrial life okay because they are saying that if life is on earth so that it can be in the universe also because the universe is too big and if there are uh, if we believe the kepler space mission data then there could be as many as 40 billion earth size planets okay uh, which are uh, like surrounding sun like stars and red dwarfs in the milky way alone and uh, we will be able to isolate a lot of stars in our solar neighborhood which are like earth like and using the nasa's technology of transiting exoplanet survey satellite as i was saying that transiting technology is there which is called as tess mission and james webb space telescope jwst we can look about it okay and uh, it will help us to make observations using a method called as transit spectroscopy as i was saying that whenever planet and star are crossing each other you can see these two different phases and you can reconstruct the entire spectrum of the planet and you can also use it to make up the atmosphere but everybody is perplexed with fermi's paradox so fermi's paradox says that since there are billions of earth like stars and we are billion years old and just in few million years you can travel the entire galaxy some of these civilizations should have become intelligent and they should have done interstellar travel but where is everybody so this is called as fermi's paradox there are a lot of counter to it also and uh, so just remember what is fermi's paradox thank you for watching this lesson have an awesome day